I am starting the Design a CPU 4 course. Now we're not really designing the CPU because we've done that in the courses 1, 2 and 3. In this fourth course we're going to look at implementing the floating point unit into our design. Now we're going to have a floating point unit and a little cordic unit. When we bring these two together I'm going to generate something that we can call a math coprocessor. Now I'm acutely aware that having generated courses previously on designing a floating point units that people tend not to be really that interested um, and what I want to do in this course design a CPU for is have a 16-bit floating point unit but I'm not going to go into the mad detail that I went into whenever I did my 32-bit floating point unit courses because people just aren't really interested in that mad detail and if you want you can always go and take the 32-bit unit courses if you really want to get into the details so what I want to do in this course is I want to generate a working device now it will be working hopefully for every value so all of the kind of edge uh, and all the corner conditions but whenever I come to describe it I'll only describe it uh, I won't get into the mad detail in the description but I will go over uh, enough detail for you to understand how it works and for it to remain interesting to you so that's the kind of balance I'm trying to take on this course. I don't want all the detail, but I want enough detail for it to be of value and interest to uh, you. Now, what I've done so far, and I want to try and take you along with my YouTube channel here. So I'll, I will produce videos and I'll let you know how far along I've come with the actual course. And now and again, I will release the actual course videos and onto the YouTube channel so you can have a little look and you can see uh, what you think about it. Now so far um, I've actually did the 16-bit design for the uh, adder, subtractor and multiplier so I'll quickly show you these just now uh, in this video and then on the next video, uh, video I will start with the, um, the divider and we'll start working through uh, trying to work out how to uh, generate the division. Now, as it stands right now, I don't know how to generate the division. I'm going to have to learn that for myself as well. I've got some ideas of how it works, but I'm going to have to go through an awful lot of detail to make sure that I get it just right. So here is the adder and subtractor. So in this instance here, we've got the actual adder and subtractor unit here. So what we will be doing is we will have this in effect a block like this for add and subtract. We'll have a block like this for the multiply and then the division and the square root. So we'll have to bring these four blocks together uh, and then uh, generate some sort of like a, a register or control for information coming in from the CPU and then the information coming back out uh, back into the CPU and obviously we're going to have to have um, some floating point instructions as well but we'll generate all that you know that's all further down the line so in this instance here we've got this adder subtractor and again I'm not going to get into all of the, the details here we'll have a quick look inside now what we can do here is for testing it we're going to have an input here uh, for x and an input y and then it'll go in through the adder subtractor and then it will give you the output down here in the result. And on the left hand side, we've got all of the uh, different types of numbers. So we've got in here, we would have a normal times a normal giving a normal result, a normal times a normal giving a subnormal result. So don't worry too much if you don't know anything about normal numbers and subnormal numbers. Again, whenever we do the uh, floating point unit course for design a CPU 4, the first three or four videos will actually just be on uh, floating point numbers and how they work. And I want to try and give a real intuitive understanding of how they work as well. So let's put an example in here. So I could um, put in something like, I don't know, uh, 111 and I'll put in uh, 
one 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 here and then we should be able to just do a one clock pulse and there you see the result has come out there two 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 uh, it's not actually come out the bottom here i'll have to see why that is um but i'll check that out for my myself at some point but anyway you've got the answer here uh two 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 so it does go through the addition and if we did the subtraction it does a subtraction as well so if i head down into the block you can see how complex the the floating point unit blocks are so this is the uh, how we do the add and subtract and each of these has got uh, obviously their own uh, certain level of complication okay so there's quite a lot involved in the actual uh, the description of the circuit but again I'm not going to get into all that detail so that's the add and subtract I've got another one for the multiply and it's a, a, a similar size of this and it's a similar setup okay I'll, I won't bother bringing it up because uh, you'll see it anyway within the course now another thing I'm doing I'm doing it this weekend is I have uh, some uh, Excel VBA uh, simulation tools which are really handy for generating uh, the addition subtract and multiplication uh, of uh, our 16-bit numbers but I've got it in a 32-bit um, format so I'm going to have to cut that down from 32 bits down to 16 bits so that's something that um, I'm going to do over uh, this weekend and it will probably take me into some time next week as well because the, the coding in it was quite complex but that's where I am at the moment um, there won't be another video for a few days uh, until I've actually generated or got a little bit further along with my uh, design so that's all for this video um, stick with me um, I will be uh, quite busy over the, the next few months generating these courses but it'll be well worthwhile once we implement it into the CPU uh, I will actually implement it as a separate block so we will have the CPU but then we'll have another block but which will physically look the same size as the CPU which we can call a math coprocessor so loads to do loads to get on with uh, it's all really interesting stuff uh, some of it's going to be quite difficult um, I believe but who cares um, it's going to be interesting so thank you for listening I'll get you on the next video goodbye